Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock 2 Studio and today I'm sharing with you what I did on the live stream for 8-8-2019. Um, Peg and I have a live stream every Thursday at 10.30 Central, 8.30 Pacific Time over on the Art Joy of Sharing channel. I will put a link to that channel in the description box below. Um, so what I worked on today for this live stream is I was working on the very last page of my small dilutions journal. I still need to decorate the cover, but after that, it's completely finished. And so I was just, just winging it, just 100% winging it, trying to figure out what I was gonna do. And I decided I would be inspired by the color red because I don't use red very often. It's a nice, hot, you know, warm color. And of course, I'm gonna complement it with other warm colors. So I got out different scraps from my big bin and next to my desk under the desk it has all the different scraps that I just plop in there and haven't sorted yet and I sorted out some that I thought were interesting that were um, red orange pinks all different styles of papers nothing specific it's not like a specific type of collage I'm just using what I find in this bin and that bright red paper is a wrapper from tangerines that I got from Switzerland from a friend. There's some, um, there's a piece of magazine there that I put over the top of a stencil and then use sandpaper to make an image. There's a gel print on black. There's just like other pieces that, there. that chevron thing is from a magazine. The little swirl on the right hand side is from an envelope that somebody sent me. Um, there's a punched out piece from a project previously. They're just bits and bobs. There's a resist piece. The um, Harlequin design up at the top is, is embossing resist. It's just pieces and bits and just stuff that I have. And I just sort it by color. That's like completely color driven in this case. I pulled out things that were the color I was gonna use. And then I also grabbed some washi tapes in different patterns that have red in them and I laid some stuff out and now I'm going to collage it onto my page. My book is barely staying closed at this point. <laughs> um, it's, it's clipped in the corner. It wants to fold. So um, having another collage page just can make it a little bit fatter. I'm going to have to make a stretchy belly band to keep it shut, which will be something I'll do with the sewing machine. So I'm just putting these different pieces on there, different types of paper. They have different medium on there. That one has some distress oxide on it and it's kind of smearing around. I'm using my Liquitex matte gel medium to put these on. Remember that's the thicker formula. If it's a real thick piece of paper, I will spritz it on the back with water just to loosen it up a bit to get it to um, conform to the page a little bit better. The page is buckled. It's got things on the other side of it. And so I want to make sure that everything is glued down really well. I prefer matte gel over gloss. Um, other people like glossy gel better, but I just prefer the matte. So that's what I use. You can certainly choose what you would like to use. The one thing about matte gel, however, is that when you put it over something shiny, like this little piece of leftover paint that was a paint I had mixed to make rose gold for another project, um, it will mat it down a little bit. It'll make it a little bit duller, which is okay with me in this case. So I'm just continuing to add things. If I put it in the crease, I fold it over um, so that it will be able to fold later. Getting things down into the crease of a book like this is a little bit tricky. And I'm letting them go over the edge because I plan on trimming it all the way around at the end there so that it's all even so it's okay if they go over the edge a little bit. I used that intense red paper in three places so that your eye moves around and it is crinkly so when you look at the close-ups at the end you'll see that there is texture there because the paper is crinkly it was it was wrapping up some oranges or tangerines or something at some point and I think it makes an interesting texture. Um, I also added little torn bits of a few different washi tapes to my uh, composition. I think washi tapes are really fun, but I like to stick it down with my matte medium. <laughs> Even though it's already sticky, it doesn't stay stuck for me. So 
I make sure that, that that's all sealed down with some matte medium as well, and underneath and over the top so that it doesn't come up. And I had one more section there that needed some more, so I added some more of that um, orange gel print that I'd used on another place on the page. It's a good idea when you're doing a collage like this to use the papers in more than one place on the page so that you get um, the eye moving around the page in a, a triangle or circle and it just makes it look more complete. It makes it look more pleasing to you when you use the same color, in this case collage paper, in different areas. I felt that I needed another spot for that dark color because I only had it in one area and it didn't look right to me so I put another piece over there and I'm just messing around making sure that it, I'm happy with it maybe adding a little bit more uh, washi tape here and there all these papers were so different they were all from different things and uh, the only thing that's making it cohesive is that they are all warm colors otherwise they wouldn't really be I don't know, they wouldn't go together if they weren't all the same color. So now I'm just trying different things that I have that I pulled out. Um, I didn't know what the page was going to be about. And I pulled out things that I thought would fit on the page that I thought would be interesting. And I decided at this point that I had a few different types of cutouts of food. And there's a lot of things about food that are red. There's red ketchup, there's red tomatoes, there's red grapes, there's um, a lot of red. And then, of course, a complementary color to red is green. And so, of course, there's a lot of things that are green in food as well. Lettuce and apples and pears and there's green grapes. So I decided I was going to make the page about food. I was hungry anyway. Hadn't had breakfast. Still haven't. Still editing at this point. So, um I'm hungry. I decided that food would be fun and I had a magazine near me that was, I think it's Rachel Ray's cooking magazine. And so I needed a few more pieces. I thought that this shrimp was the same shape as that spiral that I'd done on the right hand side. So I wanted to add the shrimp because it was an interesting shape. And also it is a, a color of red. It's a pinkish color when it's cooked. So before I was going to put my food on, I decided I needed to integrate some of these pieces anytime you're going to make I mean you could leave this this piece of art just like this I mean it's it would just be an abstract collage and if you're going to do that you do want to do a little bit of integration of the pieces and one of the ways I like to do that is to just use my finger and some paint so I got out some deco art media fluid paint um, this is really good for this process it's it's fluidy, easy to apply with your finger, and it's also, in most cases, translucent. The white and the cadmium red that I used are both opaque colors, but the others were all translucent. So I'm just picking them up with my finger and putting them in areas that I think need to be integrated. Maybe there's a an area where I tore the paper that has a white edge. Maybe there is an area where I didn't tear the paper at all, and it's straight and I don't really want it to be straight because a lot of the other areas are more freeform. So that's what I'm doing is just adding these colors over the collage and integrating everything together so that there's a cohesive look as if I planned it, which I did. I mean, I was winging it, but I did plan it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was careful about where I placed things. So... This is something I think should be done when you do any sort of collage, whether it's an abstract or whether, you know, you're going to use this as a background for some type of a focal image, which is what I'm going to do. But definitely I could add a little bit of mark making and call this page done. It's just an abstract collage. I also added a little bit of white splatter. That's another way that you can integrate um, by adding splatter. So I had some white left over on the palette. And I decided to add that. Then I dried all that really well with my heat tool. You know, I'm on a live stream, so I need to make sure it gets done. So then I start adding my magazine cutout food. You know, magazines have such pretty food. It never looks like that when I cook it. 
<laughs> Why is that? I don't know. But I am going to use some deco art decoupage medium, which is made for napkins. And it's a thin medium. You don't really want to soak the pages. And you want to have something that has that kind of stretchiness or flexibility that will dry a little bit stretchy so that you get less of the creases. Um, I'm still going to have texture increase on this because the paper underneath is in some places textured, especially the red uh, crinkly paper that I put on there from the oranges. Um, that has texture on it, so it's going to give anything I put over the top, these magazine, this magazine paper is very thin, but you want to have, have a thin glue, don't oversaturate and don't overwork it. So I am going over the top and, um, you know, pressing, pressing out the little creases and stuff with my soft brush, but I'm not going over it so many times that I pick up the ink off of it because that can definitely happen with magazine pages. They're not the easiest thing to collage by any means. They don't always do well. So then I decided I needed some words for my composition so I grabbed a couple magazines and started to cut out some words. I knew what I wanted to say. Um, I wasn't necessarily finding it easy to find the words that I needed. And of course, I was hurrying really fast because I'm on live, you know, and people are watching me flip through a magazine. How boring is that on live? <laughs> but I needed words. I needed, and I thought it would be fun since I used the magazine cutouts to use the magazine words as well. So it kind of ends up um, looking like a ransom note type of a, a look to it. But I don't know, I couldn't find the word what. So I cut out letters and spelled it, and then I ended up doing that at the bottom too. Um, I couldn't find another word, eat. I'm sure it's there, I just couldn't find it. So I cut out letters separately, and then I, I wanted to say, you are what you eat, so eat well. And that was the words that I put on there. I decided to stick them down with a permanent glue stick. Um, I did get out a moist baby wipe, and then I put the glue stick on the back and usually on the page too. Press the letters down and then um, press them again with the baby wipe because they were sticking to my fingers so much. I was in such a hurry and I, was, I had glue all over my fingers. I wanted to make sure that I got everything stuck down well. And then I'm going to go over the top of it with some fluid matte medium afterwards so that it's all sealed in. The word what got too too fat. I should have like clumped it together a little bit because then my eat word wouldn't fit up there across the top. But you know, in a in a situation where you're doing something live, you don't necessarily have the ability to plan as well as you might have. And this was just art play today. We were just having fun. Peg was working on some resin pieces and I was just trying to get this last page in my journal finished just for fun. So um, it wasn't real a real formal setting on the live stream today. So I'm almost done getting them all stuck down and I hope that you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I don't know if you enjoy magazine collage. I don't do this very often, but it's kind of fun. And, you know, all these pictures were from different, different magazines at different times. And so, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Different. So, I got my uh, fluid matte medium over the top to make sure that those are all sealed down. And then I started with my shading around all the food with a Stabilo all pencil. It's a highly water soluble pencil and I'm blending it out with my water tank brush. And I know you've seen me do this before. <laughs> I do this a lot. It's a staple. <laughs> so I do that and then off the camera the only thing that you don't see is I add some scratchy sketchy lines around the words with a Posca pen. Uh, I think it's it's almost like mark making. I just sometimes I just like to do that around words. 
uh, not real precise, not using uh, a ruler to make sure everything is straight, but just really scratchy fast ch -ch 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 -ch, with the pos with the black Posca pen. And you'll see it in the pictures at the end. Um, those are all almost ready to come up. So you'll see what I'm talking about. I also considered making some scratchy highlights with a white Posca pen and I decided against it. Um, I don't know, I still might do it around the, the food, just some really fun, scratchy, scribbly marks in the highlight areas around the food. I'm, I'm really considering it. Even as I look at it now, I'm still considering it. But I, I am going out of town for the next six days and I needed to get this finished. So <laughs> I didn't have a lot of fussing time. Wasn't allowed a lot of fussing time. So that is it for me. Thanks for watching and I will see you again later. Bye-bye.